last show for this season. This is the end of our third year. I can't believe it, and we'll be back after our summer vacation, hopefully, knock on wood, with our fourth year. So this is kind of like our family show tonight. And uh, could we turn up the lights before we get started and see if y'all might have any questions or anything you want to say before we go? Yes? Do you really have as much fun doing this show as you appear to? Yes, I do. I really do. In fact, don't let it get around, but I, I do it for nothing. <laughs> you know what I want to do? I want to uh, take some time out and do something a little different tonight uh, because th this being our last show, I've been getting thousands, well, hundreds, well, maybe I've gotten about five or ten letters about uh, my exercise classes and stuff. A bunch of ladies have written in and some men who might have little tummy problems and things like that because I've lost uh, in the past few months of doing exercises, just a half hour a day, about nine inches overall. Not all here. It's been just kind of evenly spread around. And so a lot of people have asked me if I would show them some of the exercises that we do to uh, take uh, some of the inches off the midriff and the waist and uh, where we sit. So uh, I will do that and show you some uh, specific ones, if I may. Thank you, George. <laughs> Let me just pull these towels out here so I won't get dirty. I'll take my shoes off. And now, well, the first one is just uh, to show you how uh, you can get the midriff down in here. And those are just stretches. You just bend way over. And the first time I did it, I couldn't go any farther than that, you know. And that, that's good for in here. And then for the waistline, you do these. These are quite good. And uh, this, you know. And then I have some tummy ones that are sit-ups. And I thought it might be kind of fun if we could get uh, some man up. And uh, we could do the tummy exercises. Is there a gentleman who maybe might need them out here who would be willing to come on up and lie down with me? <laughs> would you, sir? Who's heavy? Who's kind of heavy and what? All right, sir. I don't mean I, that you're heavy, but come on up. <laughs> What's your name? Max Miller. Hi, Max. Have I ever been with mm. you before? Every Monday, every Monday. <laughs> Thank you, Gert. Well, lie down, Max. <laughs> uh, face, face this way so we can get you on the camera, okay? Like this. Now, let's just, uh, I tell you what, bend, bend your legs like that. Now, lie down. Okay. Now, just come on up. Very good. Now, try not to lift your feet off. Really get down. That's it. Now, hey, very good. Now put your hands behind your neck. That's it. Now let's go again. <laughs> now let's uh, oh, open up your feet like that. Okay, now let's lie down again, Max. <laughs> Get your hands behind your neck. Now let's sit up. <laughs> oh, Carol, you're going to have to me. <laughs> now you touch your elbow to your knee. <laughs> very good, Max. <laughs> Thank you very much. From Television City in Hollywood. It's the Carol Burnett Show. a roller derby with you tonight, but we can't. No, Harry and I still ain't done our income tax return. Yeah, sure wish Nixon would stop hounding us. <laughs> I'm still poop from filling out the census report. <laughs> yeah, I'll call you tomorrow.
already. All I said was, hiya, Harry. What's wrong with that? Nothing. It's the next question that bugs me. You get a job today? That's the one. <laughs> nag, nag, nag all the time about getting a job. Nagging did any good, I'll be the president of General Motors. Oh, that's good. Your charm is exceeded only by my nauseousness. Oh, lay off, will you, Stella? Is it too much to ask that you and I communicate once in a while? There's no use talking. What do you want to talk for, Stella? Nothing will come of it but bad breath. Mother warned me you was a good-for-nothing bum. Oh, you and your mother. Not my mother, your mother. Will you shut your face already? Oh, yeah? Try and make me. Mother! Don't stop now, Harry. We're communicating. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, <my Ooh>. What are you saving these beer cans for? When I get enough of them, I'm gonna build me a 747 and <laughs> split. Well, another six pack should do it. What's for dinner? I thought maybe we'd have some leftover stew from week before yesterday. <laughs> mm. <laughs> can't talk, you can't cook, nothing. <laughs> Maybe we'd go out and have some ice cream after dinner. Oh, after dinner. After that dinner, we'll get the ambulance to drop us off at uh, Howard Johnson's. Put oh. some ice cream on that poison. Very, very funny. I just remembered. We can't go out tonight. Why not? Well, I wasn't going to tell you this till after dinner, Harry, but we got to fill out our income tax. What do you mean you weren't going to tell me till after dinner? What makes you think that I, as a loyal and patriotic American, would shirk my responsibilities to my duly elected government by not preparing a tax return? What if you owe him money? I'll yell bloody murder. <laughs> this is the form? Yeah. All right, this doesn't look too hard. <gasps> okay, this is it. Doesn't look too hard. Here we go, here. If your total income is $5,000 or more, go to Schedule T to figure tax and surcharge if you itemize deductions or claim retirement income credit. Fair enough. Foreign tax credit, investment credit, or if you owe self-employment tax or tax from recomputing prior year investment credit. Terrific. If either of the two items applies, go to tax tables instead of Schedule T to figure your income. You know something? If I was smart enough to understand this, I'd have an income. No way. You're in trouble already. You can't even answer that. What's wrong with that? What is that? Occupation. I'll just put down uh, freelance uh, executive. <laughs> Don't make the computer laugh, Harry. Now, what was our gross income for last year? Let's uh, see, there was uh, 52 welfare checks. Yeah, and don't forget the unemployment insurance and all the food stamps. Hey, I didn't realize we had such a big year. <laughs> I wonder if the kids earned any money last year. I don't know, I'll find out. Oh, Brewster! The head of the household is calling you! <laughs> Brewster! All right, all ready. What do you want, Daddy? Why didn't you answer me the first time I called you? You got an excuse? No, I got no excuse. <laughs> now you got an excuse. Shortness of breath. <laughs> now, how much money did you earn last year? Uh, let's see. Um, I stole some hubcaps, uh, swiped a motorcycle, uh, looted a couple of TV sets, and picked some pockets. Are you sure that's all? Honest. <laughs> Ma, I gotta go to my sex education class. Okay, now remember, you're only 15, so pay attention. Pay attention? I'm the teacher. 
<laughs> I better, better call our adorable daughter, Dulcie. Yeah. Dulcie! Teasing my hair. That don't look teased. That looks tortured. <laughs> you leave the child alone. Remember, she's only 11 years old. She needs her mother. Let me handle this. Dulcie. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> Dulcie, sweetheart, did you earn any money last year? Oh, boy, did I. Oh, boy, sorry I asked. <laughs> I had an easy job. I earned $2,000 babysitting. Babysitting? Who for? Oh, Tony, Rocco, Joey, Mac, Eddie. Wait a minute. They don't have any babies. I told you it was an easy job. <laughs> hey, what time you gonna be home? Nine o'clock in the morning. Good. You know I don't like out when it's dark. <laughs> Gee. Seems like only yesterday she was out selling cookies. <laughs> well, Harry, the kids are gone. Might as well finish our income tax. Are you, are you uh, wearing a new perfume or something? Well, Lysol. <laughs> well, you know, let's uh, see here. there's uh, something about you that's making you very intoxicated. Oh, Harry, come Maybe on, it's just being near you, huh? Harry, come <laughs> The kids are gone. Let's take advantage of this magic moment. Yeah, yeah, now, now, cut it out. No, no. If we're late in filing our income tax, we can be penalized. You know? It's worth it. Come on, Stella. <laughs> oh, Harry, Harry, where are you taking me? <laughs> there. Up to the roof. What about our income tax? That's what I got in mind. Another tax deduction. <laughs> You know, week in and week out, nobody works harder on our show than our wonderful group of dancers. I think they're marvelous. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, tonight here with Tony Rizzi, featured on the guitar, are the talented Ernie Flat dancers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes. Mr. Cartwright? Yes. Uh, Lee Henderson. Ah, I'm, I'm the photographer from Home Beautiful. Ah, yes, I've been expecting you. I'd like you to meet my wife. Good. Oh, Pamela. This is Mrs. Cartwright, Mr. Henderson. Hello. How do you do? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cartwright, I must say that I've been taking photographs of homes for over 15 years, and I have never seen a more immaculate room. It's simply stunning. Uh, I say, would you mind not standing so long in one place? You're depressing the carpet. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. You mind if I look around a little bit? Please. I'll tell you, it's just amazing what you've done to this room. It's simply... Oops! You have your hand on my railing. You see, it's very sensitive to clammy hands. Forgive me. I understand that the two of you have contributed equally to the furnishings of this room. Is that correct? That is correct. And yet our tastes blend so perfectly that there is not a jarring note in this entire room. Marvelous. Wait, that gives me an idea for a picture. Yes, the two of you over here by the fireplace, if you don't mind. I'll have a picture of you toasting one another to the splendid results you've achieved together. Oh, like this? Yes, that's perfect. Just perfect. Now, excuse me a minute. I'll get my camera equipment and be right back. I'll only be a minute. Well, Pamela, our lovely jewel box is actually going to be immortalized in Home Beautiful. Yes, yes, Fillmore. And I liked what you said to that photographer person. That part where you said our tastes blend so perfectly. And it's absolutely true. There's not a jarring note in this entire room. No. Except, of course, for that ashtray that you picked up in Copenhagen. Possibly. I tell you what, why don't we just put it out of the way until the picture taking is over? There. Now, there's no question about it. This room is in impeccable taste. You really think so, Fillmore? Of course, darling, don't you? Well, not, not really, darling. You see, I searched all over Denmark for just the right ashtray for just that spot on that table. <laughs> there, now the room is perfect once again. Well, Pamela, in a case like this, uh, your taste, however excellent, I think should defer to mine. Excuse me. There. Now, you must admit that that's a tremendous improvement. Huh? Be no honest. More. Uh, I feel this room simply cries out for this ashtray, dear. Darling. Mm -hmm. Well, since you are so determined, why waste time in petty arguments? That's the way I feel, dear. Me too. There. Why, Fillmore, you threw my Copenhagen ashtray right out the window. Yes. Now, don't you think that was a sensible way to deal with our little disagreement? I was very fond of my little Copenhagen ashtray. Almost as fond of it as you are of that vase you bought in Bangkok. Which one? This one. Excuse me. Oh, that one. <laughs> that was rather petulant of you, Pamela. I'm really rather shaken by what you just did to my vase. I dare say. Just as you'd be, if anything were to happen to your collection, of Venetian stemware. <laughs> I dare say. I wasn't quite expecting that of you, Pamela. Really? No. Not from someone who was so sensitive to beauty that they would travel all the way to Rome to select a magnificent pair of Fortuny drapes. <laughs> I 
I was hoping this wouldn't turn into a debate, Fillmore. <laughs> However, I must say, I find what you just did to my draperies inexcusable. Especially for a man with such an eye for perfection that he would search the world over for an exquisite sofa covered in frightfully expensive imported silk. Rather small view. Carol Burnett Show, following station identification. I happen to be a nut about the Late Late Show, and most of all, I guess I like those lavish, old-fashioned musicals, you know, that they made in the 30s and the early 40s. And uh, one scene I always loved, there was always a scene in a crowded restaurant where the hero and the beautiful heroine just started singing and dancing to music coming from nowhere, and nobody in the audience ever thought it was strange. Here we are, Jessica, darling. Thank you, Frederick. Ah, how divine. The perfume, the delectable shoulders, the lustrous hair. Oh, Freddie, you madcap. <laughs> you care for some champagne? Yes, of course. It was a delightful movie, wasn't it? Well, I suppose so, but then all love stories seem so nothing compared to ours. Oh, I hoped you'd say that. Oh, Freddie, you are happy with me, aren't you? Happy? Oh, Jessica, Jessica, it's much more than that. Why, it's heaven. heaven. I'm in heaven. And my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. Can't speak. And I seem to find the happiness I see. I feel it too when we're out together, dancing cheek to cheek. What 
it's like in the movies. But can you imagine what would happen in real life if an ordinary couple began to do exactly what they just did? Uh, thank you very much. I don't uh, have any... Uh... Here, uh, allow me, uh, allow me. Oh. <laughs> Oh, your hair. What are you doing, Walter? Your hair, Marina. What? There's some popcorn fragments in there. <laughs> it must have been uh, those rowdy kids sitting behind us in the movies. Oh, don't hey, don't I'll, bother, Walter. Oh, it, it's no bother. Up, uh, up close, sir, your hair doesn't seem as lifeless as it appears. <laughs> Stop it, Walter. You're attracting attention. You're so loud. Sit down. Be quiet. You know, if I may be so bold, Marina, you know, you were a very charming person, but uh, you're, you're rather inhibited. Walter, I am what I am. That's very profound and well put, and all that. I mean, they had a lot of style, but uh, you're still missing out on a lot of romance with that kind of an attitude, Moynihan. Why take the people in the movie tonight, where they were singing and dancing their way through life? Heaven! <laughs> I'm in heaven! I'm making a fool out of And you. my heart beats so good, I can hardly sing! <laughs> I see to find that happiness I see. When we're out together, dancing, chick to chick. two years that you've been uh, starring in this play, you've never talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dear boy, you can't expect Clive Kensington to have the time to speak to all of the little people backstage. <laughs> yes, sir. What is it you do? I'm the director. <laughs> How nice. Help me out with my coat. Yes, sir. The only reason I'm speaking to you tonight is that this may very well be my farewell appearance. A representative of a major movie studio is in the audience tonight. <laughs> oh. Well, I hope what I have to tell you won't affect your performance tonight. <laughs> My dear boy, why would anything you say affect the world's greatest actor? Your co-star is ill. She can't go on. Well, it's no matter. I've been carrying her for two years anyway. Who's her replacement? Sabrina Hackmeister. <laughs> Who? Well, you might say uh, she's a personal <clears throat> friend of the producer. You should know. I guess you want to meet her before you go on. Yes, again. Get out. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Kensington? Sabrina Hackmeister. <laughs> I just had to tell you in person what a big thrill it is for me, little Sabrina Hackmeister, to be able to appear on the same stage tonight with the immortal Clive Kensington. I just can't believe it. <laughs> you can't believe it. <laughs> Have you had much experience in the theater? Oh, yes, indeedy. I was a showgirl for three years. That's where Manny discovered me. You know Manny, the producer? Mm. <laughs> now look, Miss Hackmeister, this evening's performance is particularly important to me. Oh, yes. So just say your lines and don't get in the way, particularly during my magnificent death scene oh. at the end. Oh. Do you understand, Miss Hackmeister? Oh, golly, yes. You know, I'm probably your biggest fan. I tell you, every single time you finish one of those big dramatic scenes, I just get all choked up and tears well in my eyes. You're, you're just too much. Oh, wow. Bless you. One minute, questions, everybody. 
Step aside, Miss Hatmeister. My public awaits. Good luck and, and break a leg. <laughs> I'll see you out there. Oh, boy. Me on the same stage with Clive Kensington. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, pretty get ready. <laughs> Sylvia? I'd love one. I'm just mixing myself a drink. Would you? <laughs> I'd love one. Uh, sit down, Sylvia. I must speak to you. It's urgent. Uh, sit down, Sylvia. I don't believe that you're aware that... I don't, I don't believe that you're aware that you're aware... Sit down, Sylvia! <laughs> Sylvia, what I have to tell you is in the nature of a confession. I cannot in my heart of hearts deceive you any longer. You deserve better, my darling. That's why, as I sit here and look into your eyes, as I look, in, as I look into your eyes, as I look into your eyes, I know how wrong I've been. I've been wrong to keep everything from you. I must tell you everything, my darling. I must tell you the truth and wipe the slate clean. You better have a, a sip of your drink, my darling. You may need it. About Three years ago, I... About... About three years ago... About three years ago, I, be I became a... <laughs> About three years ago, I... About three years. It's not about. It can't. So let me let me help you, my darling. Oh, there we go. <laughs> about three years ago, I became involved with something that I've regretted every waking moment since. Oh, my darling, even though my very life is at stake, promise me you won't get upset. Okay. <laughs> I'd like you to be so brave in the face of adversity. You do love me, don't you, my darling? Oh! Oh! Yes, Franklin, I do. I really do. <laughs> and I want you to know, Franklin, that no matter what happens, I will always be by your side. Yes, well, thank you, my darling. There's more. Mm. And if a man and a woman, woman mm. are to have a meaningful relationship together, it must be based on love, faith, and trust. <laughs> mm. Now, if you have a problem, my dearest, do not be afraid because we will face it together. Just thank you, Sylvia. Well, three years ago, I started to gamble. Oh, that's what I have to tell you, my darling. I started to gamble. Oh, small trifling sums at first. <laughs> in fact, 
But gradually, inevitably, I began wagering more and more, larger and larger sums of money. And unbeknownst to you, I've, I've used up all of our savings, my darling. I've, I've sold all of our stocks and bonds. I've borrowed from friends, from relatives, sinking deeper and deeper. <laughs> sinking deeper and deeper in debt, as though it wasn't enough. Nothing was enough to feed this horrible, terrible sickness that I have for gambling. Here, have a bit. <laughs> it's like a nightmare, Sylvia, a nightmare. At this very moment, I owe the mob $50,000. You believe that? Fifty thousand dollars they give me an ultimatum. Either I pay them the money tonight or they're going to kill me, Sylvia. They're going to kill me. <gasps> oh, you're too good! Oh, you're too good! Don't applaud, you little fool. But you're so good. I know. <laughs> uh, well, that's it, my darling. That's it. That's my sorry. That's my sorry tale. My sorry tale. That's it, my darling. What am I going to do now? I think you're supposed to go to the window. <laughs> oh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> that they're bluffing. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I assure you they're not. Come here, Sylvia, and look out this window. Come here, my darling. Come, Sylvia. Sylvia, come. Hurry, Sylvia! <laughs> Look out the window. Do you... <laughs> Look out the window. Do you see that man standing down there beside the phone booth? Do you see him? He's a hired killer. I don't see nobody. Don't panic. <laughs> we must do something. We must think of something to watch with that thug. What's he doing now? <laughs> He's leaving, you say? <laughs> He's coming towards the house. Are you sure? <laughs> You're positive, you say? Where are you? <laughs> then we must get out, my darling. We must escape him. Out, quickly, the back way. That's him. Oh! That's him. Oh! This is it, Sylvia. Yeah. The end of the road. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do, you ask? Oh, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to face adversity for the first time in my life. That's what I'm going to do. Be it life or be it death, I'm going to face it head on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What is it you want? You got the money? No, I don't. Do with me what you will. Oh, that was loud! <laughs> I'd be shot, Sylvia. that we didn't have more time together. Yeah. Oh, my darling, the one thing I regret more than anything is that we didn't have more time. Believe me, my darling, I, I never had anyone else. There hasn't been anyone else but you in the last five years. Oh, my darling, please, let me run my, my hand through your hair like I used to do. Remember, I used to love, oh, my, my love. Oh, oh, my darling. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> My moments are few and far between. I, I, I'm going quickly. I want one last thing, my darling, one last request. Please get me to the window so that I can see, see anything. See my beloved New York before I depart this world. Be careful, darling. It's only an eighth of an inch above my heart. I 
beloved New York, beautiful city of broken dreams. I vowed I'd beat you, but I've lost. Yes. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> I've lost. I've lost. Be sure to tune in next week when we present the first in our series of the best of the Carol Burnett shows. Enough of it. Oh, don't move. I'll get you the ice. Don't move, dear. I'll take care of it. Chris? Give me a little push, will you, Molly? Get mine started, Bert. All right, dear. <laughs> go, go, go. Oh, hush up, you fool. Oh, I can't help it, Molly. When I see you in action, I don't know what happens to me. My eyes get big, my heart starts pounding, my blood starts racing, and I feel like... <laughs> There is no room service. This is a prison, Zelda, a prison! I know that. Mm. It's the night, the night. In a few minutes, they'll be bringing me my last meal. I thought she said there was no room service. <laughs> Marion had just received an obscene phone call and was so outraged she hung up within 10 minutes. <laughs> and the same to you.
Do I find it difficult being a sex sell? No, it just comes naturally. <laughs> I'm so glad we had this time together Just to have a laugh or sing a song we just get started and before you know it comes the time we have to say so long there's a time you put aside for dreaming and a time The time I like the best is any evening I can spend a moment here with you when the time comes and I Just sit back and think of you only, and the happiness still comes through. That's why I'm glad we had this time together, because it makes me feel that I. Seems we just get started And before you know it Guess it's time for me to see So long The second half of the Carol Burnett Show has been brought to you by the Kobe Palmolive Company, makers of New Fed, now with lemon freshened borax and stain-removing enzymes.